Well, hello, YouTube friends. Hey, I just got had an, a request for uh, a coffee table and two small end tables. So I have this one I'm going to start on. I'm going to share that with you from start to finish. And uh, I, I thought I would uh, experiment with the 18 inch first. And then uh, if I like the way it turns out, I'll do another 18 inch. And if I'm fully satisfied then with the results, I'll do the 24 or 36. I forget now which way we're going to go with that. But this one is going to be 18 inches. And you see it's a piece of pine that I bought already cut out. And uh, it was cheaper to buy it that way than to do it yourself. You can buy these at Menards. That's where I got this one. Um, now, they want these tables to have rivers in them. I'm going to have a river going in across the the uh the 18 inches and also the others so let's get started i'm gonna freehand the river shape that i want and i'm gonna cut it maybe a quarter inch or so deep with the with the dremel and then we're going to burn it it's they want a lichtenberg pattern on a on a, a all around so we're going to do that so wish me luck and here we go First, I'm going to take a marker, and we're going to squibble out where I want the river to go. And I think it's going to come into this side here, and we'll just take it right down through there. And it's going to be more narrow at one end. It's going to come in and out and zigzag around, and I think it's going to come like that. And uh, I might have a, an island in the middle of it, I think, like this. That's what it's gonna be, right there. Good river, and uh, the, the river, we're gonna have a dugout across there so we don't have any worry about overflow. So we get started and get the carbon on that as soon as I get this uh, air circulating my trusty hood on here. I might do some detail work with the uh, with the Dremel, but I uh, I decided not to start out there. I'm going to use my uh, chainsaw. What's my digger here? You see, it's one of those gizmos that you have on the. It's a belt drive. You put a have it on a 180 chainsaw. Uh, you can put them. I see them mostly on 170 seals, but. Uh, tell you what, uh, don't like about the 170. Don't you can't get the easy start on it, and I want the easy start, and it has to be the 180, and they fit just fine and work just as well, and they're about the same size. So I'm gonna see if I can't hog this river out. It just I got three of these to do, one of them, uh, uh, two of these, and then one bigger one, and the Dremel is just gonna take too long. So I'm gonna. See To speed up the video, I'm running this at five times actual speed, but in reality, it only took me two minutes to cut out this entire river. That's a fast way to get a river through there. Now I'll take a, I'll take a Dremel and do some details around the edges, and. Uh, Smooth that out where I want, and the uh, biggest part of the work is done right there. So let's get started and see how that comes out. So let's call that good. And uh, I'm going to do the Lichtenberg burn on this part of it. And we will start by putting the 
the um, baking soda mixture on the surface that we're going to be uh, be working on. So. I thought the camera was running and it wasn't. That was a big problem. And now, see me just putting some heat on, getting rid of the bubbles. And we are, we are definitely getting rid of the bubbles. Hopefully be the last of the bubbles. In preparation for the pour, I sand the entire piece from 80 to 400 grit. For the mold, I used an 18 and 1 quarter inch piece of plywood and I circled it with a thin piece of uh, vinyl plastic. Now we're ready for about a quarter inch thickness epoxy pour across the entire top and uh, that will require then about 24 hours to let that dry and it'll be ready to take out of the mold. Now we'll just cover it up and let it dry. Picked up this piece out of uh, off the banks of the river when I was driftwood hunting. And I think it'll make an ideal uh, base for my river table. try that in the shop and get it leveled up the best we can 
and uh, and see what it looks like. Okay, I'm back in the shop. This is ready to sand and finish. Okay, I want to start the sanding process. Have this little my little handy dandy uh, palm sander, and I think I can get the biggest part of it done that way. It's pretty smooth anyway. It's not real rough. But I wanted to show you what it's looking like. Look at the difference here. It's uh, already turned gray. It's been laying outside in the driftwood. And uh, got a little check right here we're going to take care of. But uh, there's what it's looking like after I get it cleaned up. Well, I've decided to do something a little different for this table base. I'm going to take these wedges and drive them in and uh, get a nice get get the crack sort of filled in and and what i'm going to do is <coughs> put some two-part epoxy in there that will sort of stop the crack from from opening up anymore oh want to show you here how I'm applying how I'm going to to glue this all together you wonder how you're going to get epoxy down in on each side and all around that crack but what I'm doing I'm using door jam way, way, uh, wedges that carpenters would use to, to square up doors with uh, you can buy it all the big box stores and little hardware stores and everywhere but I mix up uh, my two-part epoxy and put it on one side of that wedge. Two-part epoxy on both sides and sandwich between the wood before you ever put it in there. And now I'm going to lay it right down, right down in there. And it'll fit in there. And when I drive this in, it's going to wedge it in in tight we can we can drive all the wedges in there we want uh yeah let's get that done now and the same process and uh like i said before we'll get it all sanded real good again and stain it and by golly we'll have us a table stand well here uh there's my end table base again. I'm sanding between each coat of, uh, of polyurethane, and I'll be giving it probably five or six coats. I don't know. This is the second coat here, and uh, it's getting pretty smooth now. I'm uh, re-sanding this with, uh, with 320. Uh, until I get to the last sanding and I'll, I'll probably use 400 then and then I give it a final coat. Here's that big uh, crack down one side where it's separated. <clears throat> it's glued uh, glued and wedged uh, with uh, two-part epoxy. Then I filled it with sawdust and uh, I'm going to leave that crack just the way you see it right there, but I'm going to have it stained so it will, will sort of match. So let's uh, get finished with this, uh, uh, what to be the fourth coat and see what it looks like. Okay, finally time to attach the tabletop to its base. We do that with some L brackets that simply holds holds it down, and the L brackets, the screws I used are five eighths, and these are three quarter inch uh, tabletop. So now we put the screws in that goes down to anchor that way, and uh, well we're. We're finished. We're ready to turn it over and see what it looks like sitting in position in the office. This is about as good as it can be this way, but the floors are not always level, especially on concrete. So 
If you ever hear of three leg tables never wobble, well, keep that in mind because you're about to see that that is very true. We're going to go here, have these holes marked somewhere. That might be it. And this one right here. Three-legged table. Went from two legs to three legs.